half my brain tied behind my back every day just to make it fair. Barrington, Illinois, John, as we head back to the phones, you're next. It's great to have you here. Hi. Good afternoon, Rush. You know, I think I speak for some others who have been throwing drinks or shouting back at the radio when people like Susan from a couple days ago come on, and the first thing out of their mouth is, there's no difference between Trump and Hillary. And I can't believe that you let her go on without proving that statement up. Uh, Wait a minute now. I'm having trouble remembering that. Uh, I'm not disputing you, but a lot of stuff happens here every day. I think I know who you're talking about. Was she... She was the one that wanted to ridicule the Trump supporters into behaving. Uh, that's not my my memory is somebody getting mad at me for not supporting Cruz and condemning Trump. Uh, but I don't I don't recall. We get, go ahead and time is dwindling. Make it make she, it. She she was not going to vote for Trump. She I believe she was for Cruz. And you know my point is people need to get their priorities straight. This is. Uh, we have a 57-game exhibition schedule to pick our starter for the political Super Bowl, and there's only one political Super Bowl. And it, you cannot undo the process. And the people that are not, that are not willing to put our best candidate forward and the one that, the, that all of us are participating in uh, choosing... Wait, you, you're, you're, you're laboring under a very important misunderstanding. And that is that given this season, there are a lot of Republicans who are more than willing to lose this election rather than have Trump win it as a Republican. Well, I, I think tried those priorities to... are out of order. Pardon me? Those priorities are out of order. and Not to them. That's not... how they save their jobs. That's how they save their prestige. That's how they save their self-esteem. Well, I think they won't have a job then because I don't think there will be a party after that because I think between the Tea Partiers and the Trump supporters... They're gone forever if 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 this is somehow undone. Well, no, 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 no. Way. They'll still have their magazines. I'm not talking. Ab They'll still have their pundit jobs. They will still have uh, their good standing in the club. No, this is a serious point. I'm not trying to interrupt you here, even though I'm, I'm out of time. It's a serious. There, there's the the unity you talk about. It doesn't exist. Okay, here's uh, here John back in Barrington, Illinois. I didn't want to shortchange you on your time there since I since I uh, interrupted you to try to... Um, I, I wanted to disabuse you of one of your premises, and that is that everybody's going to be united and behind the nominee if it's Trump. That, that I don't know. I wish it would happen, too. I even said so on Fox News Sunday, that everybody would finally realize the enemy is Hillary, Hillary Clinton and the Democrats. Uh, but there's so many people on our side personally invested in maintaining their own position in life and their, you know, whatever you're in the establishment, the club, in Washington, wherever, uh, that Trump being elected effectively leaves them out of power. That's that's horrible from their perspective. So, Well, I, number one, I think that's just as ridiculous as saying uh, Trump is a Nazi. I mean... Washington isn't going to go away, and if the Republicans have control of all three branches of government, you know, there's plenty, there's plenty of room in the government in the process for everybody to, to work on something. And if Trump is going to do as much to push projects ahead, I think there'll be plenty of work for everybody to, to go around. It may not be as much as they want to do in the area that they want to do, but I think he's just going to reset the priorities. You know, one of the things I was thinking about was since Reagan, there's only three, now four guys, including Cruz, that I consider guys that are willing to completely go to the mat for Republican or conservative principles. And that's Gingrich, Trump, and Cruz. Everybody else, to me, you know, Romney, if he would have had any, uh, would have taken it to Obama and made the, made the last election about Obama's record. He didn't do that. And to me, that's an evidence of, you know, a lack of combativeness. And, you know, under Gingrich and Reagan, there was progress made on conservative and free market principles. And so I think it requires somebody who's got some combativeness to push things ahead in those areas. And if Trump is only 50% conservative, that's 50% conservative and combative, to me, is better than 100% conservative and not combative. Right. No, I, I, all of that, I, I, we're... We're talking past each other because you, you're, you're talking about this 
from a standpoint of perspective that the people I'm talking about are not interested in. You're interested in winning the election, beating back liberalism, stopping the things going wrong in the country, repairing the economy, repairing the border, repairing all of these cultural rottings that are going on. The people I'm talking about who are talking about voting for Hillary before voting for Trump, none of that matters to them. This is why I have spent so much time in recent weeks trying to explain it, that it's personal. It's, it's about maintaining their current position in life that they fear would be imperiled if Trump were to win or if anybody outside the establishment were, were to win. Uh, the opposition to Trump is, is categorized by the people I'm talking about, which is a finite number of people. I'm not talking about everybody that opposes Trump. I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm talking about – I don't know how to be more – explicit than I have been. I just the, I just don't want to name names here. But the the people that are responsible for this line of thinking, you you can you can put them in a couple of blocks of Washington DC and they are trying to motivate other people to agree with them. And it's those people that are out there saying some of them are elected Republicans, others are in the punditocracy, some are in the media, some are at K Street, some are lobbyists, some are campaign consultants or whatever. And and they're all saying that, that Trump is so bad, so unacceptable, that we'll vote for Hillary first. Now, there's no way under the sun that a Republican in this era – votes for Hillary Clinton or does anything to enable her to be elected, who is actually engaged in taking things seriously. They can't do that. There's the, 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 this country is at a crossroads, and there's not a whole lot of time here between us and the edge of the cliff. And, and the election of Hillary Clinton, or whoever would be, get the nomination if she doesn't, is to anybody really thinking totally unacceptable. No, the, these people are not analyzing it the way you did uh, and the way you do. They're not looking at it in ideological terms. And, you know, Trump's acceptable because he's maybe half conservative or 25 percent. That, that's he's not them. He never has been them. He's not part of them. He's not qualified Besides, he poses a threat. Think of these guys as individual wizards of Oz, and somebody's about to rip the curtain open, and they're about to be exposed. These are the people I'm talking about. The Wizard of Oz didn't care what happened to Oz. He cared what happened to him. And it's not very many people, but it doesn't take many people to, to have the power to run the apparatus here that is known as the Republican National Convention or the upper echelons of the Republican Party. Look, another Politico story today. Another L. Rushbo. See, I told you so. The headline, Trump's foreign policy team baffles GOP experts. Now, one of the people named has, is, is Waleed Ferris who is excellent on international Islamic terrorism. He's a frequent guest on TV. I cite the guy practically every time he appears on TV. He makes so much sense in identifying who the players are and what their real motivations are and what their tactics are and what and where the real alliances are in this mess that we call the Middle East and Islamic terrorism and so forth. But here's the... The, the, the nut of this story, if you will, Trump's it's it's the political Michael Crowley writes it. Trump's foreign policy team baffles GOP experts. Republicans can't figure out the mogul's quirky mix of advisors. And then we go to page two. I'm not going to give the name because I, 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 I don't want this person to start getting inundated with mail. That's not the point. A former official in the George W. Bush State Department, who is now a fellow at the Hoover Institution, 
said to the Politico, I don't know any of these Trump foreign policy people. You know, national security is hard to do well, even with first-rate people. It's almost impossible to do well with third-rate people. Well, this is pretty much translation. I don't know these people. They're not in the club. These people, Trump's name, I never heard them. I don't know who these people are. We can't have them. I don't know them. I, I, I never heard of them. It's like the famous New York writer Pauline Kael after the elected election of Richard Nixon in 1972. She's a New Yorker. And she said, <laughs> I have no idea how this happened. I don't know anybody that voted for Nixon. So here you have a former Bush State Department. I, I, I don't recognize any of these people. Uh, I never heard of them. I don't know any of them. You know, national security is hard to do well, even with people like me. But you put people in there I never heard of. Oh, no, we can't have that. Classic. They're not in the club. And that's, Frank, what most people think is a plus, is getting people. Not, the, the, let's face it. The club ain't doing too hot, folks. The club has been messing things up here for at least seven years, if not longer. Anyway, Steve, I appreciate the call. John, I, I'm sorry, I appreciate the call. I've got things to do that are backing up on me here. I still have a lot of sound bites to get in here. So sit tight, folks, because there's much more straight ahead. When are we going to start questioning who's on Obama's foreign policy team? When are we going to start questioning who's on Hillary's foreign policy team? When are we? Look, I know it's the Republican primary, and I know the contest right now is for the Republican nomination. I get that. But the problem is all of this vitriol at Trump or at Cruz or back and forth, when it's over, none of it's going to end up being redirected at the Democrats where it really needs to be directed.